Okay, in this video we're going to talk about finding absolute maximums and minimums on a closed interval. Um, and this involves using something called the candidates test, um, which really doesn't become super useful until you learn how to do definite integrals. Um, so this is kind of like a revisiting of a topic, really. Um, so here's basically what it says. Um, and it says, uh, well, this isn't what it says. This is called the extreme value theorem, actually. Every continuous function on a closed interval, so you have to have a closed interval and the function has to be continuous, otherwise this doesn't apply, um, has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum value um, somewhere on the interval. And so this is really important and we're going to use it. So the candidates test says that maximum or minimum values must occur at either an end point um, or at a critical point. So hopefully you already know the candidates test from your work with derivatives. Uh, but it becomes much more useful and um, applicable when you can actually do antiderivatives and uh, more specifically definite integrals. So here's a couple of pictures. So we could have this, and you can see there's the absolute minimum at that left end point, whereas the absolute maximum is just at, it's going to be at a critical point. Um, or we could have something like this where there actually are no critical points, um, but you can still see the absolute maximum and it has an absolute minimum. So these are continuous on a closed interval. Don't need to be differentiable, just continuous. Um, and then here's a third example where it's going to happen at both um, critical points. So absolute maximum, absolute minimum. Okay, so we have that. So let's try to do a problem. So let's say that we're given that f of 0 equals 2 and we want to find the absolute minimum of f of x on the interval from negative 5 to 6. And you're given the graph of f prime shown kind of below the problem there. Um, so this is a really common problem. Uh, probably you'll have to do something like this on a free response question on the AP exam, if you're in AP calculus. Uh, so the absolute minimum of f of x, I'm going to write it as an accumulation function. So f of x is um, 2 plus the integral from 0 to x of f prime of t dt. So that's going to have to happen at an end point or at a critical point. So I like to write that down. Um, now I need to know the critical points, so you can actually just look at the graph of f prime to find the critical points. Um, so f prime of x equals 0 at either x equals negative 3 or x equals 2. So those are our critical points. Um, so now what you usually do is you make a table. So the table is going to have the end points, it's going to have the critical points. So negative 5, negative 3, 2, and 6 are all the candidates for the absolute max or min. And now what we need to do is uh, we need to figure out those values, so there's going to be a lot of geometry. Um, so I think the area of that region, the area of the region is 3, but it's below the x-axis, so we say negative 3. Um, we have another region here, which has an area of 4.5, uh, 3, and then a negative 4. Okay, so let's find these values. Uh, so f of negative 5 is a little complicated, right? Because negative 5 is less than 0. So I needed to switch the bounds and change the sign. So I go 2 minus the integral from negative 5 to 0. Um, which is a big deal. You do that all the time with this kind of test. Um, if Basically, if, if you're going to the left of your sort of initial condition, uh, you're going to have to subtract it. If you're going to the right of your initial condition, you're going to add the definite integral. Um, and we always want the lower bound to be less than the upper bound when we're doing this. So we get uh, 0.5 for that. And then when we get f of negative 3, again, we have to switch the bounds and change the sign. Um, and then we get 2 minus 4.5, which gives us negative 2.5. That makes sense to me, right? Because looking at the graph of f prime, I can see that negative 3 is a relative minimum, so it the value at negative 3 should be less than the value at negative 5. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and it is. Uh, now we need f of 2, so now 2 is to the right of our kind of initial condition, so we're just going to add the definite integral. And then when we get 6, uh, we have to go from 0 to 6. So we go uh, 2, and then we add 3, and then we subtract 4, so we end up at 1. So the question was to find the absolute minimum. In the table, you can see that the absolute minimum is negative 2.5. It occurs at x equals negative 3. Uh, usually I write that out, but you can see from the screen here, I just don't have the space. Uh, let's take a look at another problem. So this one's going to be calculator, but I'm not really going to show you the calculator, because at this point, I'm going to assume you know how to use your calculator to do basically everything. So given that f of 1 is equal to 4, and f prime of x is equal to x minus 1 plus 3 cosine of x squared. We want to find the absolute maximum of f of x on the interval from negative 1 to 2. Okay, so we're going to need critical points. So f prime of x equals 0. My calculator gives me 
that x is negative 0 0.993068, and I'm going to say that equals a, so that I can just write a. And also, x equals 1.29156, which I'm going to call b. So now we're going to set up our table. Um, f of x is 4 plus the integral from 1 to x of f prime, that should really be f prime of t dt, um, so that I don't have like a dependent variable type situation. Uh, so let me change that up. So this should really be a t and a dt, because uh, you shouldn't really have the same variable in there. Okay, so let's take a look. So here's our table. So it's going to be n points and critical points. So negative 1, a, b, and 2, because I define what a and b are. Um, and then I use a calculator, just do the definite integrals, and it gave me these values. Did four of them all in a row, just kept changing that upper bound. Um, so I get that. And the question was about the absolute maximum. So the absolute maximum from the table is clearly 4.256. That's huge compared to other things. And so we want to write up our answer. So the absolute maximum of f of x on the interval from negative 1 to 2 is 4.256, and it occurs at x equals 1.292 by the candidates test. Notice that I've rounded everything to three decimal places. Uh, that's essential if you don't want to lose points. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.